Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another day of the video, Darren, how's it going today? Today it's Wednesday, it's the morning, uh, it's 20 past 10, been quite slow getting up this morning, but I'm now ready to continue proofreading my dissertation. Um, got out of bed this morning at about half past seven, um, relatively begrudgingly, um, and then uh, got ready for the day. Laura went out, she's taken the printed copy of my dissertation so that she can um, hopefully do a bit of proofreading and stuff. I've got um, some notes on the bits that she's already proofread for me. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to forge forward, I'm going to get the testing section done, and then I am going to um, move on to the conclusion, get the conclusion done, think about getting some results in there, and then in theory, wait for Laura to get back in theory, but it's probably going to take me all fucking day. And then the project is, I've done it now. All I've got left to do is the uh, results section, which I'm just about to start implementing. Um, I've got to build a bit of software to test. Um, problem is, <laughs> that's, that's not as trivial as it sounds, it's a problem. Otherwise, what do I call it? I didn't do the washing up. What, what pleb? To sandbox. Proving ground? Proving ground. That'll do. <laughs> so I have my test project is up and running. Um, it's got 97% code coverage and I'm now going to prove that my mutation system is going to be able to pick up the fact that actually it's not very well tested. Um, so that's exciting. Actually a decent amount of work to go into the <laughs> to this. Um, to like get everything right, but I did find some errors in the code that I'd put in my dissertation, so that's good. Some like syntax errors. Um, so, it's time to point my mutation system at this, I think. You can't do it. The example isn't... It's too basic. It's too... Uh, hard diggity damn doodle, man. Hard diggity damn doodle. Because all I can do is mutate it to create an infinite loop, which counts as being caught because it's an infinite loop. Because if I can't, I can't count infinite loops as not being caught because that doesn't make sense. Ah, oh, bolts. Is there a way that I can make this so that it will detect the problem? I just don't know! I'm starting to feel a little bit cooped up. Um, that's problematic, that. I was hoping to be able to do this and be like, look what my program could do. So should I do it in more simple sense? Instead of picking the one that I did, be like, look, this is the kind of test that gets missed by my program. Like, give a realistic experiment where it gets 100% code coverage, but there's a problem and my program can identify it. I just have to develop those things, I think. The question really is, is it worth it? I mean, yeah, potentially. But I'm feeling a bit cooped up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out on my longboard for 10 minutes. I want to go down this path that me and Laura walked down the other day. It's really close, um, but it looked really good fun to longboard down. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna have lunch, and I'm gonna figure out what I wanna do. Another forecast is like predicting um, like thunderstorms and rainstorms coming soon. So I'm gonna head out, out, I'm gonna think about this. I think the problem is, in my example of how bad, how code coverage doesn't test everything, in my attempt to write bad tests, I actually still wrote pretty fucking good tests. <laughs> or conversely, I wrote code that couldn't be meddled with too well. Like, the code was actually quite resilient. In an example where I was trying to show how in tests on, like, tests code coverage is hiding the fact that this code isn't resilient. I fucking wrote resilient code like a dicker. So, let's think about methods of which we can showcase these things that I've got. These little doohickeys up here. The ones that I've got running anyway. Um, I can't wait to have a job again, guys. I can't wait to just have free time. You know? It's 
re really fucking dragging me down. This university shit. I understand people who don't want to finish university. I don't get them. Oh god. I just want it to end. On this field here, there's a path on the other side of it, um, which has like the smoothest, most gradual incline I've ever seen on a path. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just want to, just want a longboard down it. Cause it's gradual enough where you could just pick up a ridiculous amount of speed and not be terrified of dying. But I'm, I'm just gonna do it once. So I've been thinking about it ever since we walked down it. Um, get off my chest. All right, okay, how can I write a test that covers everything without covering specific things? Hmm. I also don't want it to become trivial. I don't want it to be a trivial test that, um, you know what I mean? I don't want it to um, be like, oh, well, yeah, obviously. I want it to be quite a subtle problem that my system's able to highlight that isn't. I want it to be simple enough for me to be able to develop it quite easily, but complicated enough where a normal person would look at it and think it's okay, you know? Okay, this, look, look how smooth this is. I've just got to go up the hill a little bit before I can come down it again. And there's a dog walker up there as well. So I'm hoping I can wait for him to get out of the way. I have some free time and I decide I'm going to make a video about longboarding. It's going to be here. That's what I'm going to do. Casually keeping up with an electric bike. Well, kind of, because I just stopped to vlog. I'm excited to get a walk. And it's smooth that you can like actually do that thing where they wiggle. To, um, I accidentally come down a bit. I need to go back up the top and then just smoothly glide down there. Oh, I, I knew it would be this good. Oh man. Let me read. Look at this man. It's so much fun. I'm coming to the end of it though now. Oh, it's nice to get some fresh air, isn't it? Drops off massively here though. I'm probably going to have to jump up and get scared. Probably. Yeah. Most likely. Going downhill, boys. Properly downhill. Whoa. Holy crap. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was fast. So, thank you. I noticed looking back on the vlog, it doesn't actually look that quick when you're like watching yourself. Because um, the background is really moving, but it's fucking fast. Man. So fast, though, it's too sharp a corner for this. <laughs> At that speed. Anyway, all right, let's go back home. It's enough fun, I think. Should we go back up it? It's smoother than the path, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go back. No, no, no. Let's just go home. Let's have some food. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to write a test that looks like it should do what it's doing, does what it's doing, but doesn't defend against what it says it's defending against. How? I don't get I don't know how this is possible. I need to write some kind of maths where it touches all of the lines. All of the lines get touched by the, the test. But one of the lines doesn't have an effect on the outcome under the scenario in which the test is testing. It has to be maths based as well. I need it to be like a, a decent thing as well. It can't be... I don't know, I just don't know. Okay, I now need to figure out the same thing but for a logical switch statement. So, an occasion where there's an or statement that it's not being tested properly. Think of a reason why that would be, like I've done this one, I've done like a mock, really bit like mock bank system where like you try and withdraw money um, and the bit that is calculating the balance isn't um, tested. Um, but it tests how much you withdraw, but it doesn't test the remaining amount in the bank. So it's withdrawing like more whenever when it mutates it goes cray. Otherwise though um, What to do statement when you might need to do this or this um, This or this preferably in a bank world because now I've got it um, Mm-hmm. Finished. 
Alberto then ladies and gentlemen, bit of a time jump. What's going on with the thing remote? There it is. So shortly after me putting the camera down, I figured it out and I started programming and I programmed it as fast as I bloody well could do, got the results I needed, then started writing the results section as fast as I bloody well could. Um, I finished it for the time that Laura came back, got here and we started, we had dinner and then I went back to, oh no, that was when I finished it, went back in there, did a little bit more work. Um, we went to Tesco to buy a um, pack of donuts. Laura had one, but I'm thinking about having that one as a bit of a treat to myself for finishing. Um, so, yep, yeah, what else? What else have we done? Um, yeah, so we got back, went into there, polished everything that I could polish, printed it out so I could get Laura to proofread it for me. Um, and then I was working on getting my code submitted. Okay, so this dissertation thing is quite a complicated scenario. You upload a PDF online on Moodle, fine, go. You then have to print off two copies that are both bound um, and hand that into the office. Um, with both of those, you need a CD. I've only got one, C well, I bought two CDs, but um, I fucked up one of them. The CD you have to submit, and that has your source code on it. Um, so I put one of the CDs in. Uh, it's gotta be, re it's gotta be a single write CD as well. It can't be multiple writes. Can't be rewritable, it's just got to be writable, um, which <laughs> fucks everything up. So I put one of the CDs into Atlas, and Windows 10 pops up and goes, Oh, would you like to use this to play music with or to store files on? So I clicked store files on it, then reformats the disk, and I can't use it anymore. So that went well. I put the next disk in and click on music, um, and this time it lets me write, like burn the information that I need to burn onto the disk. Um, I've now discovered that I actually need two discs, so I'm going to have to buy another disc on campus and hope that I can get a um, thingy from it. I'm assuming that the university computers can have disc rewriters in them. Um, if not, I might have to ask around to figure out if someone has a laptop that can put a disc in it. So anyway, um, I have like a copy of my code. I've got everything backed up everywhere. I've got it on my external hard drive. I've got it on Google Drive. Um, I've got it on this disk now. Um, so yeah, anyway, I panicked a bit because I copied and pasted my source files um, onto like a, a different area of my computer so that I could test it to make sure it still worked. Um, because obviously I'm not copying everything over. And it copied 1.5 gigs and I'm like, Fuck me. So I go through Visual Studio and clear it out. So I would clean every solution so there's no built DLLs or anything like that in there. Um, do it again and it's like a gig. And then I go in and then there's like loads of log files from when it's been doing, when I've been testing it. Uh, so I go and strip them all out as well. So um, that was fun. Uh, we went through then and it got to 700 megabytes. No, 200 megabytes it stripped down to, sorry. Um, the disk has 700 megabytes, that's why it came up to me. So it fits fine on the disk, I'm like, wait. So anyway, I've been complaining about having to use this archaic system to hand in our coursework on a fucking CD. Not on a flash drive, not anything. But anyway, there's this also, there is a digital upload. You digitally hand in your source code online on Moodle. Um, which is like our portal thing. The problem is you can add one, so you can submit one thing and that one thing can't be bigger than 50 megabytes. And if you compress my code that's 200 megabytes, it goes down to 78 megabytes. So I frantically email my dissertation, my like supervisor guy, and I email uh, the like the boss of the Vanier project thing and I'm like, what do I do? And they're like, it's a limit on the portal itself. Like you can't go above 50 megabytes. Um, I, it's like, because of the way Visual Studio does its projects and stuff, I'm terrified of pulling the projects apart from each other. Um, because I'm pretty certain you'd never be able to put it back again, <laughs> you know? Now all I need to do is upload a copy of the email conversation that we had, um, and that'll act as, like, basically look at the CD rather than look at here. Um, so that's good. I'm happy about that. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, otherwise I've been sat here for the past... It's only one o'clock, to be fair, it's not too late. I'm actually doing a lot better at staying up late. I'm not tired at all. Um, but I am gonna go to bed soon. Uh, <laughs> so, I've been sat there uh, going through all the revisions that Laura made, um, making it all pretty, making it all set, and it's done. It's ready tomorrow for me to go and print it, 
me to go and get this CD from somewhere. <laughs> I'm hoping that the scenario that I can't burn this disc at university, which I'll be surprised if that's the case, but I'll have to drive back to back to Bristol, burn it here, drive back over, and then submit. It's gonna be a right bitch. Uh, I've also got to go through the process of trying to get the printing people to actively do print the stuff. Like, I mean, I've got all day. I've got a lecture at nine o'clock, um, and in theory, a lab at five o'clock, but I'm probably not gonna go to it. I have all day to get this all sorted out. It's just, I've got a lot of things to do tomorrow. I've got a lot of things I want to do this. So, I ought to get well rested, haven't I? Um, time for bed. I'll catch you later, ladies and gentlemen. I've finished. Now, tomorrow I can start doing group coursework for entrepreneurship. Way! Oh god, could you imagine if that hadn't have been postponed? It used to be due on Friday, that did. And they postponed it by a week. Could you imagine if it wasn't postponed? I don't know. We, we as a group would have been fucked. I'll catch you later.